You're listening to Big World Network. Prince from Another World, Episode 1, written by Estella Avery, read by Megan Hedin. The full moon shined brightly in the night sky, adding a sense of eeriness to the darkness of the unfamiliar city. The birds cried out, moving to perch higher in the trees as the branches waved menacingly in the wind. The few light posts nearby radiated their light at the hooded woman half hidden in the shadows. Her green cloak concealed part of her long, dark hair that curved wildly down her shoulders. She glanced upwards at the squawking, causing the moonlight to reflect off her deep blue eyes before fading into the blackness of her cold stare. The woman turned her gaze back to the path she was on and walked through the deserted cemetery with purpose and determination, the blue bundle in her hands doing nothing to slow her pace. The faded sheet slowly came undone as the woman made a sharp turn around two tightly close trees, barely avoiding an exposed tree root. A pale, small hand was revealed, followed by a faint cry. She stared down at the baby's raven hair, and her gaze turned colder as it clashed with his sapphire eyes shining with pure curiosity. Delicately small, ivory fingers grasped the locks of her hair that fell towards his face, and he gently tugged them, demanding further attention. A faint sound behind them broke the woman's gaze from his. His cry became a giggle as the woman suddenly began to run, his wide eyes scanning what little he could make out over the edge of the sheet. A shout behind them had the woman running faster as her eyes turned from blue to gold in mere seconds. A bright light shot through her extended hand and slashed through the night for a brief moment, making it seem like day had arrived too soon. The young man who had come rushing through the bushes after her halted, quickly covering his eyes with his arm and then rubbed them in an attempt to regain his sight and the chase. "'Namora, this will not solve anything. You are only stalling, nothing more,' the man called out, his voice full of threats and desperation. His fatherly face gave away the fear he felt as he lost sight of the woman. He looked around the now-empty cemetery and cursed under his breath. His gaze moved from one strange tombstone to another, each threatening to make the unsettling feeling in the pit of his stomach grow— and he knew he was no longer in his world. A rustle to the right, down a path half-hidden behind a row of trees, had him running once more, and as his own hazel eyes turned gold, a faint golden line appeared on the ground. The man quickly followed it with greater resolve as once more the woman's figure came into view. Ligferium bringi begrinian, he chanted in a language long forgotten. A ring of fire magically appeared, shooting up from the ground to encircle Nomura, sealing her escape and forcing her to face him. The grass scorched and burned, adding food to the flames. "'Hand him over, and I will spare you,' the man said, his short beard doing nothing to hide the angry expression on his face. He stretched his hand towards the woman and lowered his gaze in search of the bundle she carried. His anger grew at the sight of her empty hands. "'I no longer have him, Grayson. And since you were foolish enough to follow me to this world, both of you can stay here forever,' Nomura spoke, her voice dense with the hatred towards the man." A wicked grin crossed her rosy lips as she wrapped her pale hands around a golden amulet hanging around her neck. "'If I was you, I would hurry before a human finds him first. "'Bedrini, estiri o fefere!' she cried. Her eyes turned gold once more, and her body was surrounded by huge gusts of wind, violent and fierce. Screeching howls sliced through the air, threatening to turn Grayson's clothes to shambles. She was escaping, traveling on the wind back to their own world. He could not let her escape. Thinking quickly, Grayson pushed his body into the impossibly strong wind and headed toward where he had last seen Nomura standing, desperate to reach her before the spell finished. But he was too late. The wind quieted down before it dissolved into the night, disappearing with Nomura, but leaving Grayson standing in the middle of the woods in an unfamiliar city. He ignored the fear spreading through his body and closed his eyes. He tilted his head, "'struggling to hear the faint, muffled cries of the baby that was now miles away. "'Grayson clasped onto the faint sounds and locked onto its location, "'hoping he would not be too late. 
I'm coming, my son, he called out as his eyes flashed open, a bright golden hue reflecting in them before the spell took its course and he vanished, leaving the empty field in the state it had been in before he arrived. The baby's cries were no longer of curiosity. He called out to his mother and father in the distance, small legs kicking the blue sheet covering him. His cries became louder, making the lid of the metal garbage bin he had arrived in fall off as a trail of gold faded from his eyes. The lid clanged to the ground with a loud bang, and a light turned on in one of the windows in the building behind him. Listening to Big World Network. Music by Kevin McLeod.